we are not backing down. We are consistent. We are as consistent as we've ever been, and we are predictable in how we vote, and that is not changing. We do see that there is some kind of backlash here on the ESG side. It started in in America. Um, climate has become very political. Uh, it's also moving into parts of Europe. Now, we are very clear in our thinking that climate has nothing to do with politics. In my mind, uh, you know, climate is as political as gravity. It's just not political. Nikolai, can I pick up on monetary policy because it is a domino focus for a lot of investors at this point and you know everybody still has their fingers crossed that we're not looking at a policy error here, a high for longer still the message from central banks. What's the biggest risk you see from central banks at this point? Well, I, we we've been um, we've been in the camp that uh, that inflation could stay long for longer and and uh, could stay high for longer. And of course, we only talk about Europe because we are position, we are situated in the Norwegian central bank. Uh, but we've been worried about uh, you know the the food inflation spilling over into wages. Uh, the geopolitical situation is inflationary. We are seeing uh, you know um, international cooperation uh, reversing less trade, um, more uh, trade wars and so on. And all this is driving inflation and it's negative for markets. So when it comes to your strategy around this uh, negativity, how active does that mean you are? Because I was looking at uh, some of the comments you made uh, in recent months about uh, just what you would do about exploiting some of the opportunities you see out there when there's uh, some behavior in uh, asset prices at this stage. We've obviously had a very choppy August. I mean, how active were you in the market then? And what do you see for the months ahead based on uh, monetary policy? Are you going to get this opportunity to be more active in the market because of dislocation in prices? Well, it's um, it's very very difficult to say. I mean, the, our long term strategy is really to be exactly that: very long term, very diversified. We own, you know, 1.4 percent of all the companies, all the listed companies in the world. Uh, we have great properties. Uh, we own a great bond portfolio, and we have a you know strong bond department here as well. So that's the main strategy. And then, of course, we are ready for when there are dislocations or or kind of really attractive uh, opportunities to be uh, to put more money into the markets. Nikolai, let me ask you about real estate then, because this is one area of the market that has uh, shown some cracks already. The higher interest rate story coming out of the blue for some that we were banking on ZERP for longer. What are you seeing in this space? Because I know that you have fairly significant investments. You are targeting what an allocation of 3 to 7% of the fund uh, in listed and unlisted real estate. What type of cracks do you think you're seeing in the market when it comes to commercial real estate and real estate more broadly? Well, we have we have already seen a lot of it, right? And if you look at the sentiment, we've had uh, working from home, we've had much higher interest rates, we've had problems with some of the regional banks. So the news flow has been really, really bad. So I do think we've seen quite a bit of that now in the, in the valuations of these companies. Whether there is more to come, it's difficult to say, but we certainly have seen a, a pretty fair amount of it. Nikolai, I want to ask you about another trend. And we're very privileged to be able to ask you anything we want today, so I do appreciate it. Um, Ira, I've just come back from uh, a conference of top Italian business executives and politicians in northern Italy. And Ira just kept coming up. Uh, and the success of Ira, when well, we talk about inflation, it may well create a, a spurt of inflation in certain areas in the States. But sucking in over a trillion dollars of capital, um, when originally it was only expected to be somewhere in the region of 300 billion as well. Um, what do you your thoughts about the attractiveness of US, uh, the US and these kind of propositions and what we're not doing in Europe to compete? Yeah, I have to say that package is really impressive and uh, for sure it works, right? So we are seeing quite a bit of relocation. We are seeing quite a bit of uh, change of the, where the various projects are, are being done. Uh, in Europe, we haven't got anything similar, and it's clearly moving uh, quite a bit of business to to America. And hey, you have to give it to the Americans. Some of the stuff they do here is is really impressive. They clean up the banks much quicker after the financial crisis, and here they are really really out with something which is very attractive for companies. 